Well, good afternoon. Good hello, everyone. This is Bill from The Attentive Traveler. And today I'd like to take you into our introduction of our upcoming trip to Italy for the months of May and part of June of 2023. So this episode is the first of what will be many. We're going to be traveling for a significant period of time over to Italy, just about a month. And in future episodes, I'm going to walk you through how I uh, built the itinerary that we will ultimately take. And then at the end, we'll certainly have the follow-up episodes, which are the reviews and the pictures of all the wonderful things we're looking forward to seeing when we're in Italy. Now, Italy has one of Europe's craziest cultures and one of its richest cultures as well. I mean, it's bubbling with emotion. It's bubbling with traffic jams and strikes and rallies, religious holidays and crowds and irate ranters shaking their fists at each other one minute and then walking arm in arm the next. Bel chaos, the beautiful chaos, as it's said in Italian. Now, Italy is one of the only places on earth my wife told me she was willing to travel outside the United States to visit. Now, I have not kept to those terms. She has traveled outside the country a little, but Italy, that has been her dream. So we are going to try to take on Italy on its terms and hopefully experience a cultural keel hauling that actually feels good. I mean, after all, Italy is the cradle of European civilization, established by the Roman Empire and carried on by the Catholic, Roman Catholic Church. And as we explore Italy, we hope to stand face to face with some of the most iconic images from this 2000 year history, like Rome's ancient Colosseum, all the way to the playful Trevi Fountain, Pisa's Leaning Tower to Florence's Renaissance masterpieces, like Michelangelo's David and Botticelli's Venus, and the island city of elegant decay, Venice. Now, beyond these famous sites, there is so much more. There are timeless hill towns. There are peaceful lakes lined with 19th century villas. There's the business center of Milan and Mediterranean beaches. Italy is reasonably small and it's laced with train lines and freeways, so you're never gonna be more than about a half a day's journey from any of these places. Now, I am a huge fan of the work of Rick Steves. I mean, he is my patron saint of travel, at least European travel. I mean, for me, he has the right connection of how to plan an itinerary that is based on what allows you to connect to a place at the pace that fits with what I wish to see. I mean, there are other sources and many of them are excellent. And we're gonna use many other sources as we build out these episodes. But for me, nothing beats Saint Rick. So go out and get Rick Steves Italy if you're thinking of going to Italy. Now the image here on the right hand side is from Mr. Steve's book on Italy. And each of the areas noted here have a distinctly different flavor from ancient Rome to the Renaissance art to a romantic island. Now what Rick's book does best is help you figure out what to see given the time that you have allotted for your trip. Now if you have just a couple of weeks, which is normal for all but retired Americans, Rick can help you build a trip that includes the must-sees from this map creating an unforgettable introduction to the best that Italy has to offer. Now, choosing your itinerary is one of the most important parts of planning your trip. Now, I've included St. Rick's for a 21-day visit, but my dear wife and I, we have a little more time, so I've stretched it out to 28 days. We will follow the itinerary pretty closely but due to the time of year that we've chosen to travel, which is May and June of 2023, I've cut out the Dolomites and I've added those days and a few others to other areas that are more interesting to Jackie and I. So be sure to figure out what your things are. I mean, if you like Renaissance art, linger longer in Florence. I mean, exploring Italy's hill towns could soak up more than a week. 
And if you've always wanted to ascend Pisa's Leaning Tower, you know what? It's now the time to climb. Italy's best travel months are May and June and September and October. That means they're also the busiest and they're the most expensive. Now, crowds aside, these months combine the convenience of peak season with pleasant weather. It is said that Italy gets incredibly hot in the summer. So once you know where you wish to visit, then you got to connect the dots. You need to decide if you want to rent and drive a car or take public transportation or both. Remember to do to know what your thing is. I mean, if visiting hill towns in the area of Tuscany is your thing, then a car can be very helpful. But a car is useless in the big cities. Italian trains are faster and more expensive than the buses. Now, for my wife and I, we have settled on using drivers in public cars and trains for the majority of our travel. So here's the itinerary that we arrived at. I mean, other than the nights where we have three one night stays in a row, I mean, it gives us a very comfortable pace. Because remember, don't overdo it. I mean, I've never met a traveler. Have you ever met one? Have you ever met a traveler who says they wish they had hurried more? I haven't either. So we've tried to build in sufficient time for transportation. Uh, it'll take about a half a day to get between most destinations, especially if we're using public transportation like trains, and especially if you're using the bus lines. Now, we've also tried to take site closures into account. I mean, nothing sucks more than arriving at a city, especially one of those one night visits, and then finding out that your hope to visit site is closed. So remember to check to see if there's any holidays or festivals that fall during your time for your trip. I mean, festivals mean more crowds. Uh, they mean closed exhibits, but they also all they often offer they're, they're, they're fantastic opportunities. Rare opportunities can arrive when those festivals are happening. So lastly, we've tried to remember to give ourselves some slack. I mean, each trip we take and each unique individual, like the one, like you that are watching this episode, you're going to need some downtime. Uh, you're going to need to just decompress if you've been in a busy place or maybe to do laundry or picnic shop or people watch or whatever it is. So be sure to pace yourself. Now, we always try to assume that if we really, really love a place, we're going to come back. We're going to return. So we're going to wrap up our introduction right about here. So future episodes of the Attentive Traveler Italy 2023 will cover the details of our planning and the plan of each of our 12 stops. We'll get into the weeds with you. We'll show you on how we arrived at how we chose to connect the dots between locations and where we decided to lay our heads and what we decided to see or experience or visit and what we look forward to eating. I mean, you can't go to Italy without getting excited about eating. Now, my dear wife and I tend to not be overly budget conscious. I mean, we are not made of unlimited resources, but we do save and we do budget for our experience with an eye toward our comfort. So know that there is going to be likely some less expensive ways to connect the dots between locations, certainly on where you choose to lay your head, and at times on how expensive a place and eating. Prices can be all over the board. So know thyself. What is your aim? Don't judge others on their trip choices. It's your trip after all but we thought you should know our benchmarks before you commit to joining the adventure. So we'll cover more on this in future episodes. Now for us, the prep for travel is at least as interesting at times as the trip itself. So we tend to be our own tour guide. We try to stay up to date on the sites. We reserve tickets and tours ahead of time, reconfirm hotel and travel arrangements and check transit connections. Now, if any of this is daunting to you, then hire a good tour operator. 
get your travel agent involved, get a good one, and make sure that they can help you connect those dots and figure out where you're going to sleep. Now, we may use tour guides at various sites or sometimes in various towns, but we tend to go it mostly on our own. So that is what you'll experience from us in our upcoming episodes. We also try very hard not to let the weather impact our adventures. It's going to, and it probably will rain. It will likely be warmer in Italy than this upper Midwest body is used to. So if you wilt easily, be sure to choose an appropriate hotel. That means air conditioning. Start your days early and take some time off midday to recharge. Visit churches during the midday. It's often cool, it's very cool inside, cooler and quite interesting inside the church. Take frequent gelato breaks. You're certainly gonna be getting your steps in. Join the Passiagata, where st locals stroll in the cool of the evening. Slow down, try to take as best care of yourself as you can. Now, sometimes we ourselves will find ourselves foot tired from wandering around. Now, taking an unplanned taxi can be a good value if it saves us from a long wait in line for a cheap bus or an exhausting walk across town. So making advanced reservations will help immensely the energy wasting activity of waiting in line. Don't be afraid to be the first person at a site in the morning or the last person at the end of the day. Utilize that wonderful looking bench and sit and watch the Italian stroll by. Now, even with the best, most well-planned itinerary, expect changes, expect strikes, closures, sore feet, bad weather. I could go on and on, right? Your plan B often turns out to be the highlight of your adventure. Now, many Italians, especially in the tourist trades and in large cities, they might speak English. But if you learn some Italian, even a few phrases, you're gonna get a lot more smiles and you're gonna make a lot more friends. Learn some survival phrases and how to speak with courtesy. With courtesy, how do you ask for items? And with courtesy, how do you show appreciation for kindness? and good service. Now, finally, interacting with locals wherever you are, as Rick Steve says, it carbonates your experience. We so look forward to enjoying the friendliness of the Italian people. It's legendary. So ask questions. We have found that most locals are happy to point you in their idea of the right directions. Set up your quest for the best piazza or maybe the best bell tower or for me, the best gelato. That's what I'm looking forward to. And when the opportunity presents itself, make it a habit to say yes. So Italy, here we come. So join us for the adventure. Fino alla prossima volta. So this is Bill from The Attentive Traveler. We'll see you soon during our next episode.